some examples of um, neck irons that were used during the Civil War days. This in his tiny museum in a small Missouri town, Father Moses Berry demonstrates what his relatives, who were slaves, endured. And actually the padlock, and that's how they held them secure. He wants visitors to feel how his ancestors were once held captive. Can you imagine having this on, moving from place to place? Of course, they wouldn't be this kind. Well, it's a perfect fit. Perfect fit for you. We don't have to. No adjustments. And that's how they held them. And there was his museum holds relics of his family's life as slaves. You know, so this is how a person would be confined. It was a horrible thing. You know, this was, this was a, an instrument, a mean instrument that, that uh, held the slaves captive. And I also think it's a beautiful thing because I know it held my ancestors. Images of his ancestors fill the walls, but the history of many black families in this area has been lost because of what happened one night nearly a century ago. It was a lynching that occurred in the square, public square of Springfield, Missouri. On Good Friday, 1906, in nearby Springfield, Missouri, a lynch mob swarmed the jail, grabbing three black men accused of raping a white woman. The three black men were lynched from a tower that once stood in the middle of the public square. Following the lynching, panic among black residents. In just a few days, thousands packed up and left the Springfield area never to return. The white woman who claimed the three black men raped her later admitted her story was not true. But by then, feelings between blacks and whites were raw. Someone in Springfield minted a coin. That said on the one side, uh, 1906, Good Friday. And on the other side of the coin, it said the lynching of three niggers. Racial animosity continued for decades. When Father Moses Berry decided to return to his hometown, Ash Grove, Missouri, and open his museum, his friends cautioned him. My family friends called me here and they said, you know, you better be careful opening up a museum in that little town. White folks aren't going to like it. Despite that warning, he says his reception here has been warm. Many townspeople helped him clean up his family's cemetery, overgrown and almost forgotten for decades. Many slaves are buried here in unmarked graves. The tombstone of his great-great-grandmother, a slave, is barely standing. A few years ago, Father Moses Berry moved his family back into the farmhouse where his grandmother raised him. Nearby, he built this new church. It is no bigger than a single car garage. But within its small frame, he holds to his faith and continues his quest to resurrect the lost heritage of black Americans in his hometown. I can look back at my ancestors and go, these guys endured, they were slaves and children of slaves. And they, they were able to live their life and leave behind a loving legacy that people even today appreciate.